Okay, so before we jump on our test device, let me bring up the authentication, our live authentication page, so we can keep our eyes on that. And the first device we're going to test on is our Windows 7 machine for our Windows uh, Win 7 non-core right here. So let me bring up the interface. We have our wireless ready to go. So let's open that. And here we see our dash internal. So let's double click on that. And now we are prompted for a login credential. We say the user is going to be employee one with a password Cisco. So click OK. And now we have to make sure that we go ahead and connect. This is where it's asking you to trust the certificate. As you can see, it says server cannot be validated. And for the most part, if you're using a internal CA to sign I certificate, you will be seeing this since by default your employees or user personal devices would not trust that. So you just have to let them know that to go ahead and connect anyway. And here we're seeing additional popped up that say additional lock on information may be required. So we can click on that. And now we're just being redirected to the device registration page. And this is the supplicant provisioning or client provisioning page that we talked about. The device ID, which is the MAC address of our wireless network interface, is pre-populated. All we need to provide is a description. So we can go ahead and call it Win7 WLAN, just so we know that when we look at the My Device Portal page, what device this actually is. So now we click Register. And here we have a little popped up since we're using Chrome. So we're just going to go ahead and run this time. And this is where the client provisioning is happening. So it's downloading the agent or the supplicant rather. Let's see right here, downloading the Cisco Network Setup Assistant. And this is just to help the window machines later on download the network profiles as well as certificate. And now we have a popped up for the Network Setup Assistant for our LM internal. So let's go ahead and start. Here we uh, asked to accept the LM root CA, which is our root CA. And again, make sure we want to install that root CA into um, under our local certificate store. We'll click yes. Now we're just going to have to wait, and this is where it starts downloading the wireless profile and ICE requesting a certificate from our certificate server. All right, and now we've got a green checked. So that means we have successfully gone through that process. So at this point, we should have our wireless profile deployed to us as well as certificate. So if we want to bring up, uh, we have a shortcut right here that goes to the MMC with a certificate store added. So if we go under personal and certificate, you can see right here, we have an employee one. This just got issued to us by LM root CA. Okay, I just want to make a quick note here. If you look at the certificate attributes under the subject alternative name, you will see also here's the MAC address of our wireless interface. And if you even want to do additional tech, uh, checked as part of the authorization condition, we could also create a condition that looks up this particular certificate attribute and have that compare to the actual client ID or calling station ID to make sure that nobody else other than a machine with a MAC address is using their certificate. So it's another security measure that you can put in place to prevent the certificate from spoofing or copying. All right, so let me close that out and then let's go over to ICE and review our log. You can see here first the device came in or the user came in, employee one, and obtained authorization profile of the BULAN BYOD supplicant as expected and this is where they came in as a peep with ms chap as you can find right here so peep with eve and chef v2 as far as the authentication protocol coming from the wlc1 nas port type wireless i triple e to 11 authorized profile is the bulan byod supplicant okay if you scroll further down let's see what else we can find here the identity store that was used was ad1 because the user first came in with the username and password. And then here are all the group memberships of that user that I obtained from the AD, so BYD user group, 
an employee as well as the domain users. Right, and in return, ICE sent back the redirect ACL for lm ice only, as well as the redirect URL for that. That redirect them or the user to the client provisioning page. Okay, once the device gone through the onboarding process and reconnect, you can see they came back in, and this time receive a permit all, and they are also marked as a registered device. And I just want to show you when they came back. The second time, they're coming in as EPTLS, okay, and then receive permit all. Everything else is pretty much the same here, okay, with the airspace ACL name, out in permit all. So at this point, if we go back to our browser and our client test machine and go to internet, so let's say cisco.com, you can see we can access that as well as the internal resource. We're just going to go to our web server. On our domain controller, you can see we can hit the IS server, no problem, with the internal IP. Okay, which means that this particular user has gained a full access to the network. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is the My Device Portal. So let me bring up, and I have a quick bookmark right here. If you look at the URL, it's just the IP of your policy service node, colon 8443, which is the default TCP port, and then slash My Devices with the S at the end. And then for username, we are a employee one, sign on. And here is the My Device Portal. You can see the description of the device that we just registered that we typed in as, far as part of the description box, Win7 debut LAN. And on top here, we have a couple options that we can do. We can mark the devices lost. If you lost the device, which we will try in a second here. We have also an option to do full wipe, corporate wipe, and pin lock, and those are part of the MDM integration, which we'll look at in the next video. Okay, so at this point, let's go ahead and try to mark the devices lost. Okay, so we'll click on that, click OK. Came back success. Let's hop back onto the authentication page. Do a quick refresh. You can see an empty identity. Lock entry means it's a COA that went out, did a dynamic authorization. Drew into that. I just provide with the, the controller with the session ID and it's a admin reset. So basically remove the client from the network. The client will come right back, but this time the device is marked as lost as part of a blacklist identity groups. Hence, it's match our authorization rule that we have for a blacklist device. And that's why it received the authorization profile called blacklist. Okay, and that's just a redirect URL to the user. So if we go back to our test user and go back to cisco.com, as you can see, we no longer has access to the website. And instead, we are redirected to a what they call a black hole page. So we pretty much cannot go anywhere. As you can see on the message right here, device been identifies lost and we no longer has network access. Okay, so that's how marking the devices lost on the My Devices page works. Now we can reinstate that if the user likes to. So again, choose that and then go reinstate. Looks like the response is success. Coming back here, we saw another COA that went out. Again, that's just to force the device off the network. And then by the time it comes back, it's been removed from that blacklist identity groups. And it once again, match our authorization rule and gets to the VLAN permit all. Just to prove again, real quick, we're trying to go cisco.com and we can once again have access to the internet or the network. Okay, so the next device we're going to try this on is our iPhone. So let me bring up the iPhone right here. So we start off going under settings and then make sure the Wi-Fi is on. We'll connect to the LM internal and lock in using employee one. Password again, Cisco. Join. We we'll ask to accept certificate, and this is the access.labmins.com, which is our wildcard certificate that we install on the previous lab. Okay, so we are now connected on LM internal. Next thing is to bring up a web browser and then trying to access internet. So let's go cisco.com. You can see we're being redirected to a portal already. The first thing we need to do is to trust the root certificate, which is LM root CA. 
So we'll install and install. So profile is install. And we have seen pretty much the same thing as far as the registration with the device ID pre-populated with the device wireless MAC address. This time we'll call it iPhone. And one thing I want to make a quick note here, if you remember from the previous version or 1.1, the page right here doesn't really fit nicely like this on the mobile device. So this is something new with the 1.2 with the enhanced portal page. So as you can see, you no longer have to zoom in and trying to find this box to type in the description. Here's just fit, fit nicely to the screen. So click register. Now it's asking us to install profiles. And if you want to look at the detail, you can do that also. Go ahead and install. We'll click install now. It's going to go pretty quick and see it's generating key and then enrolling certificate. So this is where the device is obtaining certificates from ICE. And at, th at this point, the onboarding process should be pretty much done. And before we try, let's go back to our lock here, do a refresh. We see pretty much the same thing with the employee came in and obtained the WLAN BYOD supplicant authorization profile, went through the whole onboarding process, received a COA from ICE, and then reconnect, this time obtaining a WLAN permit all. Okay, the lock is, looks almost pretty much identical, but instead of it being a Windows 7 workstation, this is an Apple iPhone. Which means if we go back to our iPhone, we should have access to Cisco.com, which we do, as well as our internal web server, Jose 2 16.32.40. Okay. So you can see the onboarding process for iPhone is pretty smooth and straightforward as long as you have everything configured correctly. Okay, so our test device is Android. So let me bring up the Android. One thing that's different on the Android is it doesn't really have the native supplicant like the iPhone, and ICE is not capable of pushing down the supplicant like a Windows machine, but instead you need to download a Cisco Network Setup Assistance as an application. So there are two ways of doing that. One is you can ask the user to pre-download the app before they connect to the network and initiate the onboarding process. Or two, you would need to allow user access to Google Play while they do the onboarding. And that's for us, it's going to be part of the LM ICE only ACL. Let me show you that we saw earlier right here. Okay, so we need to add pretty much the IP of the Google Play, but the challenge is, is for you to figure out what those IPs would be since most likely those IPs will be different or potentially change over time. And unless you figure it out exactly what those IPs are, you're pretty much left with allowing the user accessing the, lane, uh, the IP range that belongs to Google and that includes things like YouTube as well. So. The safest bet is to ask the user to pre-download the application, which you will see right here. There, Network Setup Assistance. But first thing first, we need to get the device connected to the wireless network, and that will be under Wi-Fi settings. We have to turn on our Wi-Fi, and then look for our LM internal right here we're at the bottom so click on that it'll be prompted to fill in the parameters so by default it's got peep selected which is great that's what we that's what we want on phase two it's going to be ms chat v2 so make sure you select those and now for identity that is the username so that will be employee one and then for password it's going to be cisco and we'll click connect you can see it's obtaining IP right now. Okay, so it's connected. Then we go back and launch our web browser. Okay, then we go to cisco.com. And we should be redirected to our device registration page. Right here, again, looks exactly like what we just saw on the iPhone that is fitted on the screen. Device ID is the MAC address of the device. Description, we're gonna put down this one as Oop, looks like I just missed that. Looks like I misclicked and did not fill in the device ID. That's okay. And now this is where it's going to redirect the user to the 
Google Play page, and obviously we're not allowing the IPs for the Google Play. That's why it's coming back and reporting its data connectivity problem, but it's okay because we already have the application or the app pre-downloaded. As you can see on the URL, it said play.google. So now what we're going to do is to go back and launch our application. Again, all these processes you're going to have to kind of build that as part of the user instruction when you hand out to the user so they know exactly what they need to do. Okay, so let me find that. And right here, Network Setup Assistance. We'll click Start. And this is where we'll figure it out. You can see it goes pretty quickly. And now it's just trying to install the certificate already. And the way the application figure it out what the ICE IP or the IP that needs to talk to is based on the redirect URL. So it's smart enough to figure it out, the IP of the ICE based on that. And then we'll click certificate install. And this is where you have to input the password for the, your local storage. For us, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Click OK. And then we'll go ahead and, and install certificate. And this is the user certificate, so it's going to be called employee one based on our user. And the next one is going to be the I certificate or the CA certificate. Click OK. Now it's trying to connect to the network. It just got COA. You can see why it got disconnected temporarily, and now it's fully connected back to the network. Okay, I just want to quick uh, make a quick note right here. They've seen some issues in the past where the Connectivity fail right here after the COA and when the device trying to connect. And this is usually happens when you do a internal or you have an internal CA to sign your eyes. And, and that's because by default, the root CA certificate is not trusted by your Android. And that can pretty much fail the certificate since the certificate is not trusted by the, or the CA that signed the certificate is not trusted by the client. So as a workaround, what you might have to do is to distribute the root CA to the user and have them install on the Android or better yet, have your Cisco I certificate signed by a trusted third party root CA. Okay, we can see we can successfully connect it. And now if you look at the log on ICE, we can see pretty much the same thing. The first the user came in as employee one, received the BYOD supplicant, and then once it gone through the onboarding process, received a COA, and then it immediately come back and reconnect this time receiving a permit all. You can see the endpoint profile, mark it as an Android device. So now we can do is exit and then relaunch our web browser and try to go to cisco.com. And we can certainly reach cisco.com and we also want to try our internal server which is 172.16.32.1. Forty, and we should be loading the IS server hosted on that our domain controller. Okay, so we have, have full access to the network since we can access both internet and our internal web server. As you can see, the configuration itself is not that much different compared to the previous version of 1.1. The main thing that's different here for us is the fact that we're using the policy set instead of a flat table for authentication authorization policy, and the improvement that we saw on the device registration page on our mobile device. But other than that, the whole process pretty much stays the same, especially on the onboarding user experience. And that wraps up our video on ICE 1.2 BYOD wireless onboarding with single SSID. The next logical thing we're going to look at is MDM integration since that process is pretty much an extension of what we just did. So if you're interested in MDM integration, you can proceed to the following video. Okay, I just want to finally remind you that you can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmins.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.